passion which gives me energy to the whole organization to do more, to do it better, to do it in a more engaging manner. If you do those two, you then get the pride in the organization. It's another way of saying self-confidence to be bold. You then put the squeeze on performance and because you've given them everything they need, all your organization, your fundraisers, your finance people, projects people, your trustees, you've been demanding on huge levels of performance. And if you do all four of these, you need to sit back and watch that go in. And here's the secret. Do it in that order. I've worked with over 250 charities now. Every one of them has said, we just need more money this year, just bring in the money, it's just about the profit. Failed. Everyone has said, I just want people to work harder. Damn it, do it more, do more. So they focus on the performance first. <coughs> Left the organization in the months. <laughs> but everybody who started by turning up the purpose succeeded. Critical word there, or two words, which is whole organization. Our mission, which is to allow our clients and you all to apply the maximum financial resource possible to achieving our mission, started four years ago. And I'll tell you that story in a moment. But I don't want to preach to the choir, ladies and gentlemen. I want to preach to the heathens. I want to preach to the trustees that say, I'm not a fundraiser. Yeah? I want to preach to the director of finance that knows more about fundraising than the director of fundraising does. I want to preach to the idiot communications director <laughs> who said, you have to raise more money, but you're not allowed to use emotional words or photographs. <laughs> <laughs> I want to preach to the idiot brand police who once turned down my brilliant concept because the pantone colour wasn't quite right. <laughs> and because for us this is a mission, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. If any one of you that are in this room now book for the 4th of December next year, you can bring a non-fundraising person from your organization with you, free. If you're a fundraiser, bring your communications director or your finance director. I'm glad to see there are several chief executives in the room. Well done. Maybe if your chief executive is not here, you can bring your chief executive. But if you want the biggest bonfire of them all, you bring your chair. <laughs> if I extend that offer too long, then we will be bankrupt by the end of next week. So there is a catch, you'll have to book by 5 pm tomorrow. Because I don't want this offer to be made available to people that weren't brave enough to come to the first one of these events. I think you've earned your spurs, and I thank you for your support. I have got three very unusual people to thank before I hand you back to Andy and before I tell you the absolute most important thing that I learned this year and I will pass this one simple bit of advice on to all of you. Sixteen years ago I got my first managerial job in a charity. My job was to manage 500 local branches across the country. In 12 months, myself and my wonderful army of volunteers doubled our income from the previous year. And we did that with two extremely difficult strategies. One was sending very nice letters to each other, and the other one was me driving around the country speaking to everybody. I got my annual appraisal after a year, and began man and fundraising, and I was expecting a pat on the back, a well done, <coughs> doubling of income, it was several million pounds. Um, and I was actually expecting a pay rise, that was blunt. Um, um, my director sat me down and said, Alan, I need to speak to you. You're not a team player. I very rarely see you at your desk. Um, 
So you need to be in a to telephone me every day and tell me where you are, so I know you're working. <laughs> Count the money, Muppet. <laughs> <laughs>